Hey Ian, um, a lot's been said this week about you know the belief internally and, and how you guys are tracking, but what are the keys to, to winning this game? How do you beat Ireland tomorrow night? What areas do you really need to nail? Got to nail the things that, that, that we've been growing in our game. Um, rugby is a simple game in, in playoffs, I reckon. It's about, it's about the control through your set piece. It's about uh, having the confidence to execute your game plan and, and not tighten up. And, and you know, clearly it's the, the, the discipline side of the game and um, how to control yourself when, when the pressure's on. So that's probably three things I'd give you. Um, but big games are always about that. And we know that and, and we've got to be at our best. Lester, what's this week been like for you and I suppose the challenge in front of you? How much are you looking forward to that and, and I suppose relishing such a, a big stage to perform on? Yeah, I think it's, um, I guess for myself, it's the pinnacle of my career. I think every rugby player is where they dream to be. Um, the opportunity to go out there and represent our nation and the people we pride ourselves with around the world is truly, extremely grateful and something I don't, don't take for granted. And um, yeah, you know, heading into tomorrow, you know, as a collective, our main focus is to earn ourselves for another week and uh, another step closer to the World Cup, so yeah. Ian, have you explored um, you know, playing extra time tomorrow, kicks, all that sort of thing that may come out with a, a sudden death game that you don't usually experience and, and what have you done to prepare for that? Well, we played heads and tails with Will and Lester in the van coming here to see which one was going to be the goal kicker and Lester's not sure, correct? Yeah, correct. So, yeah, Groin um, issues. So you might have to find Will Jordan. Um, now we've got a plan around that. So... Look, yeah, we have we spent, we spent bucket loads of time on it, but we certainly have got a clear plan. We, we know the rules about extra time and, um, you know, 80 minutes and then another 20 and then a 10 and a few goal kicks after that. It's, um, you know, the fact is that you can't really 100% plan who's on the field at the end because you can only goal kick. So there's a whole lot of variables that, that we've worked through, but um, let's just get it done in ADA. Make things simple, keep the broadcasters happy. And Lester, for you, you had a couple of cracks at Ireland last year, then we didn't see too much of you in the All Blacks after that. Um, what have you learned over the past year, year and a half, to take some confidence into tomorrow night? Yeah, I think um, it's quite obvious. I think the whole world knows uh, this Ireland side is quite established, um, both in attack and defence, and uh, vice versa. Looking at our squad now, I know we've been through a few challenges and uh, we've been through what we needed to go through and, and I, I, can, I can tell you now that uh, you know today heading into tomorrow you know, we're a lot of side that we're a side that has taken a lot of learnings a lot of confidence and you know and I can come in tomorrow night we're going to show away from the opportunities we get so uh, yeah Hi uh, this morning we had um, an excited New Zealand media outlet claim that Ireland were in breach of some flagrant breach of some rules that we had an official photographer at your training are you aware of this and are you making a complaint or is it just um, some pretty much hype? I've never heard of it. That, that, well, I've never heard of it, so I'm not sure what, what we've done, but I haven't seen any little photographer hiding under bushes at our training, so... I don't mean to be flippant, but I've never heard of it, so... Tense old time, isn't it? Well, we better give you one, give you something to do. He wants two, he said. <laughs> We've been in a car for 40 minutes coming here for you guys, so please be interesting. Well, well, uh, obviously, a lot of the talk is of the, um, when you play the Irish, it's a good old battle up front. From a back's perspective, Will, what, from your experience, what are you, what are you stepping into a, tomorrow night? What's the challenge going to be for you dealing with that pressure the Irish will bring? Yeah, I think clearly um, defensively we'll be challenged a little bit. I think the structures, the way they play, um, with guys swinging around and lots of short passing um, has caused us a few problems in the past. So um, we've spent a bit of time working on that this week. And I guess in terms of finals footy as a whole, it's just about like nailing the skill sets, uh, basic skill sets under pressure. So across the whole backline, across the whole team, that's been a big focus. And um, yeah, that'll be big tomorrow night. But I think, yeah, in big games, you know, defence is going to be important. So. Um, that's a big task for us tomorrow. And Lester, um, 
I'm sure these weren't the circumstances you wanted to get you know, a big game like this in, but it's, it's happened. And rugby is obviously littered with stories of people taking opportunities. Can you just sort of talk us through kind of your mindset when you found out you were going to be getting this chance to play this huge game um, and, and how you kind of view that opportunity, you know, that chance to, I guess, seize your moment? Yeah, I think uh, for me personally, I think the first greatest opportunity was being named to come over and participate in the World Cup and represent uh, your nation. And um, to be, you know, in this environment and to be in this tournament, you know, it's, it's a massive pl- a pleasure. Um, and with the, for us, the awesome thing about our, our environment and our brotherhood is that whether you're in the 23 or non-23, um, you've got the same um, purpose, the same respect. And, you know, for us to get to where we are today, it didn't take just a, a game there, 23, it took a whole squad. And on a heading in tomorrow, um, uh, those boys that get the opportunity to play in that 23 is only showcasing uh, the backbone of our squad and um, and what they've done. So, yeah. Hi, Ian. Um, if I can just ask you about the man to your left there. Will has a very good try scoring record against Ireland. I think it's three tries in three games. Can you just talk about his athletic qualities and his form since coming back in from the... How many tries in how many games? Three and three. Three and three, I like that. Yeah. Um, look, he's got a pretty good strike rate, and uh, you know, look, look, Will's a quality player, and he's he, he's done a fantastic job for us. He's he's got the ability to sniff out opportunities, and and and, and growing massively with his influence in this team off the park. So, you know, a key part of our group plays well. We had a, you know, um, he, he he loves scoring tries, but he also loves contributing in the other areas of the game too, which is equally as important. So. Wouldn't mind keeping that strike rate up, be nice. Just a sorry, a question for Ian. Um, can you tell us, Ian, what is it about this group of men that gives you confidence that they can do the business against Ireland? Oh, I think the work they've done. You know, I think the work that uh, we've put in the last month, um, last three or four months, really, and it's... Um, it's, we've always known when you come to this World Cup that assuming we did the business in, in the pool play, it was most likely going to be Ireland or South Africa. So either way, you've got a monster quarter final, haven't you? So it's not like this is a surprise. We've me- mentally been ready for it. We mentally know that we have to prepare a week at a time. And, and I think we've been getting a lot better at doing that. And so, um, you know, with the I, I, full belief in this group, we, you know, we know that Tomorrow, there's going to be a. I think there's going to be. If you look at the quarterfinals, there's going to be four quality teams that won't be there in the semi-finals, and and we're pretty determined that we're not going to be one of them. But we know it's going to be a massive game, and the only way you go into these games is believing in your game and who you are, and, and we do. And furthermore, to that, just one more question: What would be your final message to your guys before they go out for this one? I've probably already given them my final message. Really, I just think trust themselves, trust the work we've done as a group, and trust you know the work we've done on the field and off the field, and um, go out and express yourself. Quarterfinals, yeah, we don't want to die wondering. You don't want to go in your shell. Um, we still want to play our game, and it's important to us that we do. Ian, um, up the back. Um, you mentioned the drive here. Was that one of the key reasons why the team didn't? train here today. I know France has been out there just, just previously before you arrived but was travel a factor? Yeah, look, the, the hotel bases that that, that we get allocated uh, you know, we, we have no control over that. Ours is quite a long way away from here so we made a decision not to do our captain's run here for obvious reasons. We, that's a regular thing for us by the way. So so we've did it, already done our captain's run but it's um, part of regulations that we have to driving for a media conference. Are you relaxed heading into tomorrow night? Yeah, I'm always relaxed when we're when we've prepared well. And and I feel we have. So, you know, I, I enjoyed watching the, the players prepare this week. They're keen. We we know what's ahead of us and can't wait. And Lester, what about you? Sleep much tonight? Yeah, same as usual. Uh, wake up tomorrow morning, a lot of excitement. Um, I know that excitement's been building right through the week and um, yeah, tomorrow night 
Um, you see a bit of that, so yeah. It's your turn, Will. <laughs> I'll go, go for you then first, Will. When it comes to this match tomorrow, just how important is it for a victory like that to maybe help rebuild the aura around the All Blacks, which maybe hasn't been there as much in recent time? Um, yeah, I don't know about that side of it. I know that tomorrow is a hugely important match um, for this team and our goals and what we want to achieve. Um, there's obviously no Monday if things don't go well. So um, I think like Foz has touched on, we've kept a pretty narrow focus on, um, yeah, just a really sharp performance on Saturday night. And um, I guess the repercussions beyond that, beside earning another week, we haven't really looked into too much. So... Um, yeah, I think we're just focused on continuing forward in this tournament and what'll be a big game. And Ian, just a quick one on Mark. If you progress this weekend, will he come back into contention for a semi? Yeah, he'll be available. Ian, Ian, here. Ten, 10 of Ireland's starting 15 have started every game at this tournament. Their minutes um, are way higher than yours. They're the highest in the tournament. You've rotated much more heavily than them. Do you think you'll have them for legs? Uh, well, everyone's got different strategies. Everyone had different draws. You know, we had, we had a, a number of players that are unavailable for the first two games of this tournament, which sort of train, changed our strategy a little bit. Um, so I, I wouldn't read too much into it. I think they're used to that. You know, they've been a... Um, uh, a very set combination, haven't they, for the last two or three years at both club level and and internationally, um, and and the journeys that each of us has taken the last three or four years to get to here with all the the world situations and travel and quarantine, all that sort of stuff has changed everything. So, but you know, we what we do know is we're we're fit and strong, and um, you know the. In some cases, we've got some guys coming back who haven't played, probably haven't played quite enough. You know, you look at the Ethan de Groot, been out for a couple of weeks, and Tyrell Lomax with his injury, and he's come back and had minimal time at this tournament. So there's strengths and weaknesses for both the strategies. And, you know, the good thing about playoff rugby, it doesn't really matter. You know, you, you know people just want to get out there and play. And, um, and we know it's going to be a full-on game, hopefully a fast game. We'd like that. And uh, and if it's and if it tests everyone's legs, then we'll be pretty happy with that. Lester, you obviously played your first couple of games for the All Blacks against Ireland last year. What are your memories of that, and how much can that help you going into tomorrow's game? Yeah, it's um, always going to have its benefits. Um, we obviously, we understand the structure, uh, the way the Irish play, and for us, um, it's something we've been building towards for the last few weeks. And um, yeah, I know. In our camp, you know, there's a lot of confidence in, in the work we've done, as Foz mentioned, and, and I think you know they was excited. To, I guess put that into action tomorrow. So yeah. Um, well, a couple of the Irish boys spoke earlier today about giving Johnny sex in another week. Um, you guys have some players who are saying goodbye at the end of this tournament. What would it mean for you to actually keep their careers going? Yeah, it'd be huge. Um, yeah, we've got a large number of guys who have given a lot to the jersey who are, I guess, in their final sort of campaign. And um, you can see through their actions and um, their care towards the jersey what it means to them. So certainly that motivates us to, to keep them going. And everyone's got their own motivations around what they want to achieve. But, um, yeah, that's definitely a big one for a lot of us. Um, you're also up against a fellow Tasman alum and James Lowe. Um, what's that challenge look like for you? Um, yeah, I think J-Lo is a very um, diverse winger and footballer. I think he's really rounded his game well. Um, obviously use him to X a lot with his left foot um, and pops up around the park a lot as well. So um, he used to give me plenty of stick when we were playing together in Tasman, so <laughs> might be a bit of chipping going on. But um, no, nah, he's a quality player and I think um, yeah, he'll pop up all over the park. So just try and limit his involvement as much as possible. I'm going to take a last question here on the right. Hi, Ian. Um, earlier in the week, Keith Earl suggested that Joe Schmidt wouldn't have any special insight above a regular opposition coach into the Ireland, Ireland team because of the passage of time and change of personnel. Is that how you view it, or has he been particularly of, of benefit to you this week? 
Look, I think no more than normal. Joe's been awesome since he since he joined us last year, and um, you know I think the the information and the different coaching background that he had, he's been able to bring that influence in from the middle of last year. So there's been nothing more. It hasn't been heavily loaded towards his insight into Irish rugby, but you know I think we've we've taken the stuff that he that that means something to him we've we've merged it with stuff that means something to us and, and created a formula so this week's largely in a funny old way you know you into playoffs it's actually become more and more about us than, than probably what you think and I'm sure Ireland's the same you know they've got a lot of belief in their game um, we've got a lot of belief in ours and so for us it's about mastery of what we do and with making some adaptions on based on the opposition we play so um, but you know, certainly, I'm, you know, I'm sure there'll be some mixed emotions for Joe in some ways. You know, he he's very passionate and he loved his time in Ireland, and it was a very special time for him. And but um, he's loving his time in this team too, and we're enjoying having him. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. All. Yes.